Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom 2015, presented by Homefront The Revolution. I'm Max Scoville. I'm joined by Toby, who is one half of the team behind ITER. Yep, yep. Hi. This, yeah, this <laughs> game is really, really pretty. You, this, I'm, I'm sorry, that was a, I'm, I'm bad at first dates. <laughs> uh, no, that's fine. That's what, is, fine. what is this game? Like, can you just kind of give us the... Uh, yeah, sure. It's a 2D isometric action RPG. And um, I think the one thing that makes us stand out from uh, a lot of isometric action RPGs is that we have real-time combat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people say, okay, what's that? But we generally like uh, want to make a game where you have to learn your character, you have to learn the attacks, you have to learn the blocks, the dodge, the parries, and um, even though you can have character progression, we want you to feel like you're getting better at the game. Right. Uh, so the first time you pick it up, you're probably gonna get uh, battered. And yeah, and then that sounds that sounds very familiar and like something that's very yeah, popular. Yeah, right yeah, now. I mean, yeah, yeah. Obvi the obvious comparison here would be the you know Dark, Dark Souls, Souls games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're heavily inspired by Dark Souls. I actually got into Bloodborne, and David Wright, who's the artist, he, he was really a big Dark Souls fan. And when I got into Bloodborne and I played it, I was completely hooked, and I loved the systems around it. And uh, we always sat around each other thinking, hey, wouldn't it be great if we had a game? Oh, wouldn't it be great if the like the big companies made a game where you've got that Diablo feel to it, where you've got random loot and you can like do loot farming. Right. And uh, but they changed the combat system completely. Okay. Uh, but it never happened. And one day we just thought, hey, uh, you made why the game we you wanted to play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we made the game that we want to actually wanted to play. And uh, so far, so good. Now, Diablo's, uh, you know randomly generate are these are these kind of ho homemade maps or is it yeah um each of our maps are handcrafted because okay. um it's very difficult don't get me wrong i love procedure generated maps right um, they have so much replay value to them um but the problem is that you can't have really organic worlds and you can't really hide stuff from players you can't have like different paths right uh, so all of our maps are going to be handcrafted uh, we do have plans to have like a procedure generated map towards end game, so you have something to like sort of loop over. Okay. Uh, but most of the game itself is handcrafted, and David actually draws every single pixel on the screen. By yeah, hand. The, the aesthetic is, is really, really. Thank you. Very thank nice. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and clearly, I mean, it's it's cool to see this kind of um, you know minimalist design coupled with what's clearly like a pretty, pretty you know juicy systems heavy yeah. game. You know, yeah. it's you know it's not just it's artsy and technical, you know, yeah, at the same yeah, time, yeah, which yeah. is kind of a, a rare combination. Yeah. Uh, now, the uh, I know that the Dark Souls games, they have a lot of kind of like, uh, it's kind of assumed you're going to die and that, you know, part of it is kind of uh, unlocking new pathways to get through. Yeah. Are you going to have stuff like that? Kind of, you, you mentioned stuff being hidden, hidden from yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw in the beginning, there was actually a door uh, that you can open from this side. And uh, what we're doing is like, we're trying to make uh, shortcuts around the map so that you don't have to backtrack a lot. Uh, we also hide stuff from a lot of people. So, <coughs> for example, if he there's a path down to the right, and he obviously knows what he's doing, so he's going to take the path down to the right. But most people who have played it at Gamescom today uh, are actually going up, and they miss the bonfire. Huh. So basically, we're trying to hide stuff away from we're trying to hide stuff away from people simply because it kind of adds the whole exploration, uh, and you have to learn the maps themselves. Um, you have to learn where everything is, and also, it's it's fun to find secrets. And um, when you find a secret, you think that you sort of be in the designers uh -huh. sort of thing. Uh, but we want it so that you just don't go into a linear sort of uh, path. We want people to This guy, explore. this guy here is <laughs> yeah, very, yeah. he's very bloodborne. He's a Jotun, uh, he's a giant. And uh, the theme to it is that uh, Ato is actually a poison that corrupts anything that it touches. And what's happening is that it's actually corrupting the whole world. Um, okay. Yggdrasil, which is a Norse mythology, is the world tree. And it's in charge of all life. It's a source of all life. And it connects you to nine different worlds. At the moment, he's actually playing on Midgard, which is Earth. And because it's a tree and it's connecting to nine worlds and it's infected by Ata, uh, it's spreading across the whole world. Ah. Right? So she now is on a quest to basically save the tree. Uh, if the tree dies, everything dies, basically. And um, she's the only one that's not affected by it. There's a little bit of backstory to it about why she's not affected by it, but it's like a gift and a curse. So it's a gift because she can survive, gotcha. um, but it's a curse because... And who is, who is she? What's her, what's her uh, role? She's a shield maiden. Uh, she has a name, but we're not revealing her name. Okay. Uh, we're keeping it a secret. Uh, but she's a shield maiden, and uh, she's literally on, on the quest to save the world and save herself, really. Uh, try and figure out why is it just her uh, that has to do this? Um, why isn't anybody else? Uh, why is it just her? The gods playing a trick on her or something. Right. No, I like that um, you've got... You've got story, but it, you're not. It doesn't seem like you're beating players over the head with it. You know, it seems the whole story. Yeah. Uh, I got to be honest with you. Like, we we, we want to make sure that our story is good. We want to make sure that people uh, can figure out what's going on. Like, he's talking to an NPC right now, and um, NPC the NPC has his own interpretation of what's actually going on. Uh, it may not be correct. 
uh, but it's up to the player to decide and sort of put things together and then figure it out for themselves. Uh, we are heavy combat uh, people. Like, we love, love Street Fighter and combat games. Uh, we love our stories as well, but we're more focused on the gameplay and then after we're going to focus on the story. Uh, we want to put the story in simply because lore crafters and people love to love to engage with the story. Um, so we're actually going to add that in in different ways. You don't have to speak to an NPC just to find out the story. It may be things on the map that you can sort of investigate mm. and find out what's actually going on in the whole world. Uh, we want people to pick apart little bits and right. together like a puzzle. Yeah. Now speaking of, of maps and worlds, uh, what's the, the, is there an overworld here? You're kind of in a dungeon right now? Yeah, it's a dungeon. We actually skipped forward. Uh, there's loads of different environments. We actually have a forest map in the beginning of this, which is the Toro map, mm. uh, but it's pretty slow and teaches you how to play the game, so we wanted to show you something that's a bit more exciting. Uh, we have different kind of maps. We actually have a Jotun world, which is a world of giants, so everything there is actually five times bigger than you are. Uh, we have a sewer map as well. We actually got a, a, a GIF on our Twitter uh, with uh, our water effects, and um, it went kind of nuts. <laughs> and it's literally just water, and we're like, I don't know what's going on. But we have loads of different environments that we want to put into the game. Uh, a snow map, for example. Okay, that, yeah, that, I, I would love to see that. That yeah. sounds very pretty. If you go on our Twitter, you could. Uh, um, it's, uh, what's, your, what's your Twitter account? Just uh, eight of the game. At eight of okay. the game. It's really simple. Cool. Um, yeah, we also have randomly generated loot. So that axe over there is a green. Uh, when he picks it up, it's better than these axes he's got right now. Uh, it gives you an extra stat, just like a uh, Diablo. Right. We like the whole loot farming thing because there's like a thing that Diablo has, which is an infinite loop, where you're playing the game literally to loot farm, mm -hmm. loot farm, loot farm, loot farm. We want to bring that back in, uh, but we want to put the combat into it so it's a bit more interesting when you're actually click, 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 click. We have no EXP in our game either. Uh, how it works is that you have uh, something. We have something called a favor system. <coughs> so when you kill a mob, or if you kill a boss, or if you find a treasure, or you find a secret that you put somewhere, you get favor. Uh, once you use favor, depending on your allegiance, let's say you are worshipping Thor, mm. which is a warrior. Uh, if you get favor, it actually gives you a more potent stat. So I might get like plus 10 on my strength. Now, if I die while holding this favor, I lose it all. Mm. So what the option is, is basically when you get favor, you have an option to go back to Yggdrasil, which is the hub, spend that favor to get a permanent level increase, and have the option to put one stat on a specific value that hmm. we have. So you can either play it safe and um, you know, uh, don't lose your favor, right. or if you wanna play it risky, you wanna have like a hardcore mode on the fly, uh, just never spend your favor and try and complete the game without dying. Because uh, hmm. obviously once you die, you lose all your favor. That's, a, that's an interesting way to approach that. Thank you. Thank who's, you thank who's this right here? That's the again walker. So he's like uh, the leader of all Draug, and Draug are the undead Vikings. Right. And um, he's going to fight him now, and uh, he's a lot harder than he looks. <laughs> um, I mean, because we want to make like massive mobs, because for some reason, when something's bigger than you, uh, it seems more intimidating. Mm -hmm. Most of the world as well is, um, we don't have any background music in, in the game. We're literally going to fill the world with ambience <coughs> from mobs, mm. from like, uh, you know, uh, water drops in the sewers, for example, and just mobs screaming. Okay. Uh, simply because it makes it feel, because uh, you're alone in this world. Like, yeah. everybody's dying at the end of the day, so you're alone and on this quest. So we don't want you to be like going through the dungeon and it's all happy-go-lucky. Right. Uh, we want you to be like really creeped out by it. But every time you fight a boss or if you're in a specific place, we pump up the music. Okay. So right now, like, the music is really pumping up and his phase has actually changed and he's more... He's more aggressive and more violent than he was when you first meet him. Um, with our mana, if you notice at the bottom, we've got those orange things at the bottom, those mm -hmm. little orange flames. Uh, we don't have mana. Instead, we have charges like in Street Fighter. Oh, so, you cool. Know, in Street Fighter, we've got one charge, two charge, three charge, and we can do special moves. Uh, so some of our skills may require one charge, which means you can equip your character to have a uh, more, more skills, uh, no, sorry, less powerful skills, but doing them more often. Or you can have a character that has more powerful skills, but do them less often. Now, to recharge those skills, for example, he's got a lightning uh, gem on that axe, which gives him the lightning skill. Uh, to recharge them, you have to, because it's an offensive skill, you have to kill, you have to attack, you have to use it, and that's how you recharge your skills. Uh, there's another one, which is a frost shield, which he has on his other weapon, has a frost gem on it. To recharge that one, you have to block more often, and you have to be more defensive mm. to get your charges back. Uh, with our pots as well, we used to have bandages scattered around the map, and what happened was, uh, you, when you ran out of bandages, you ended up running around trying to find new bandages. So huh. we took it out, and it's just an equip. And because it's randomly generated as well, that flask at the moment just gives you HP. But if it's randomly generated, you can get flasks that can actually give you stats as well. So we give people the, chance, the option to have different types of flasks. Uh, oh, to wow. refill it, you just kill. The more, the more mobs you kill, if you kill five mobs in a row, he gets an extra charge. Um, 
Yeah, and that's our skill system. Um, I just wanted to mention our gems and our amulets so people understand our skills. Uh, you don't acquire skills by leveling up. Okay. You find skills. Oh, Skills okay. are now uh, are, are, are in amulets. It's like a, uh, our idea is to have an amulet, and when you open up the amulet, it has a randomly generated skill tree. Oh, wow. With like passive and active skills. And uh, you actually put skills in those slots. And hmm. when you actually take the gem and put it into a weapon, if it works with a weapon, it gives you the skill. Uh, so you can actually have multiple characters in different gems and swap them out on the fly, really. Oh, okay. That's a good, that's a Thank cool you. system. You, you have a lot going on here. This is, <laughs> this is really impressive. And I, I think that, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of, like, glance at the, at the aesthetic and be like, this is a, this is a simple, this is an indie game, <laughs> you know? But it's like, this is, this is heavy. You've got a lot of stuff in here. Cheers. Uh, the thing is that we wanted, basically, we've tried, this is our first public game. So it's the first game that we actually show to anyone, um, simply because uh, we thought it was good enough to show people. Uh, we've made a lot of games from before, but we stuck them on our hard drive simply because they're not good enough. Wow. And um, Indies actually encourage not to take risks and uh, be really be less ambitious with your games. Uh, but we want to make a game that we would actually play. Um, a lot of indie games I've played so far, I've played them for like five hours, six hours, and I'm mm -hmm. done. Uh, but I'd rather play a game where I can spend a lot of time on it. Like I, I, I played Bloodborne for months. Yeah. Well, months I think there's months, there's definitely months. an audience here. I mean, yeah, people yeah, people yeah. play you know Bloodborne, Dark yeah, Souls. They yeah, play yeah. Diablo. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, this also has. I think this would sit really well with the the Rogue Legacy Splunky crowd yeah, to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah, yeah. You know, we wanna, we wanna different we, gameplay. Obviously, yeah. I mean, we're not going to please everyone. Um, uh, I hope we could please everyone, but everybody's not going to like you. Um, but we want to make a game that you could spend hours on. Um, we don't want to make a game where you clock it in five hours right. and you're done, um, sort of thing. Yeah. Now, what are the release plans for this? Uh, 2016. Okay. And what are your, what are your platforms you're looking at? Uh, PC and PS4. Okay. And you're getting Devolver Digital to publish? Yeah. That's oh, Devolver. Those guys, they 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 have an yeah, eye for dope. this. Yeah, they're dope. They're dope. Um, thank you so much for coming by. This game thank is you really for impressive. Being on IGN. I can't actually believe I'm on IGN. Yeah, yeah. I, I I get that feeling too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks a lot for coming by. Thank you for uh, us. We have lots more Gamescom stuff coming up, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Yeah.